All right, everybody, so welcome back. And so today, what we're going to kind of do is they just um, kind of released on Discord some of the information for all the Tier 4 units compiled. So, odd thing, I tried to get the whole world chat together to try and announce um, their Guild 4 or Tier 4 units. Um, that failed miserably. Um, no one would respond even when enticed with there the, were a couple there were, there were a, couple. a couple okay so there were some honorable mentions there were some honorable mentions yeah, I give them a shout out yeah i will give them a shout they were um they did try and help nonetheless but couldn't get them all together because I, I wanted to run through on the page but yada 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 but all right so first up i want to go into rohan here because um they set the standard in my opinion for like how because I feel like we're going to put both the Swan Knights and the Marshals kind of in the same category. Um, because they deserve to be. Because Marshals are really good. So, kind of just looking at their baseline stats. Um, 90 HP, 43 defense, 157 speed. Um, low siege, of course. Not really concerned about that. But the biggest thing here is what I like about them specifically is actually their conscription cost compared to the Swan Knights. It is the same resources, um, 1,100 less food, 800 less iron, and 6,700 um, wood, which is, I believe, just a little bit more than the Swan Knights. But yeah. you're tanking so much food costs with the Swan Knights. I mean, whenever we were fighting in Dolgador, um, there was no conscripting the Swan Knights. There, there was no... <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I mean, they just weren't... I, and I think the really key point to this is for how much you were spending on them, they were not producing adequate results to keep conscripting yeah. them. They, it just was not, for the long term, it just was not plausible to keep them running. So that's why we ended up switching off to actually lower tiered units. Yeah, to the cataphracts. So, which is the, really sad if yeah, you think about it. Because they just weren't, they were dying so quickly, you couldn't re reconscript them. Their conscript times were forever. And upgrading the barracks or, you know, whatever it is of that unit was just forever. Kind of just looking at the cataphracts in general, they're about half of the cost total. They're about half of the cost total of the Swan Knights. So, but the, let's dive into the abilities and kind of what makes them so special. So, Onslaught. First ability, um, damage dealt plus 5.6%. Effect modified by the speed stat. This effect diminishes one third with each damage dealt. So, and this doubles to, so whenever you go from rank one to two, you literally get double. So, most of the time, it's not that. So that means that rank 10, you're doing what, 56? You're doing like 40 something percent modified yeah. by the speed stat, just about. So um, if you don't have any, if you don't have a commander that doesn't do a double attack uh, for each round, then that means that for the first three rounds, you're going to have a huge damage buff. Yeah, or if you, um, now I will say with EMR, I believe that they have a chance to follow up or the cavalry chance, or they do yeah. more damage. So. Um, that's the reason why Theoden and Eomor, um, Emmer, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but also Eowyn, too, they are so good with the, you could just run full marshals, just, and run them straight at the enemy. Mounted, not too much different than how every other mounted unit is, I think everyone has the minus 10% at the end of the game, but overall, this is such a good unit, um, really good stuff, but let's go, let's go dive into the Swan Knight next, on, let's dive into them. So, conscription cost is probably my biggest complaint because you spend so much on daggum food. I mean, really, this is ridiculous. Um, food and iron, you you're basically done for. Kind of are they're just their skills. It's the they get mounted, of course, which is decent. But protector, you're like, oh, first three rounds, I protect my allies. But at what cost? You get 100 defense. You get 100 defense. And yet these guys die at the end of every battle. Even with Arwen, doesn't stand a chance. You're dying. And the only thing that you should be protecting is um, your lowest. So these work best with two units, not with three. I feel like with three, um, you, take, you just take too many losses. I don't think there's a way to work this with having three units. 
you might be able to pull this off with bow knights um, if you're running full cavalry. If not, I think uh, marksman actually wouldn't be too bad with this setup because yeah, of their damage. Yeah, I agree. Them. Marksman yeah. and, and uh, bow knights, I think, would work well. And another um, another thing to think about too is because this is Gundor's unit, <clears throat> you also have oathbreakers that are also in there. And this is a this will be another video, but this is just a small thing to add with the Swan Knights protector skill because they they take all damage from normal attacks on behalf of allies. And it was weird because we even saw some reports come in, and this may be a bug. But the Oathbreaker's ability to kill themselves, they were actually taking that damage. So Swan Knights are really not ideal to pair with Oathbreakers. It may be a bug for the time being, but just something to think about um, pairing Swan Knights with Oathbreakers. It yeah, is not ideal. That. It's an absolute meme. Um, but overall, though, I don't like this unit. Tried my best with it. Um, I wasn't running it with Eowyn, Eamor, Theoden. I wasn't running that. Not optimized. I tried my best to make it work. I mean, season one, you're trying to do the best with what you got. I just think there's you should just run Cataphracts if you're Gondor season one and you don't have Theoden or Eamor. Absolutely. Um, so let's move on to Lothlorien. March Wardens. So there's kind of three archers. So let me just move this around because... We're kind of just going to have to talk about all the archers all at once. So, because you you're kind of comparing all three of them. But right here, we've got 66 HP, 41 defense, 99 speed, 17 siege. Look at those conscript costs, folks. You just compare what the other units cost, you know, Swan Knights versus the conscript cost of every other tier 4. Um... And you're just you're just so outmatched because they're able to put these on so many more teams. I want to stress that because yeah. you can only put Swan Knights on one team max and and run it with March Wardens, Linden's units, and Rangers of the North. You can all throw these, or I should say, even Erebor's units too. Um, they're low on uh, low on wood. They, you just get so much optimization out of having these on your team versus. Um, running the Swan Knights because they are 50 units per command, and I believe most now that's all tier four are actually 50. Um, so that is a little bit better on the Cav side if you're running a full Cav, you do get that little bit of bonus um, because Calvary are 50 already. So that does kind of make up for a little bit of it, but the fit you just get so much optimization out of your teams whenever you're able to run your tier four unit on every team. I mean, whenever we were facing Absolutely. Erebor. Um, the Iron Warriors were on every team, and we're sitting there with only Tier 3 units battling them out. I think I saw a Dalwin with only Iron Warriors. I think he had 3,400 of them. I mean, that was just nuts. I mean, yeah, we'll guy... get into Iron Warriors, but Iron Warriors are one of the best units, uh, in my opinion. Very yeah. solid unit, and uh, they're very well-rounded overall. But really... I just wanted to add a quick note in here, too. Just going back to Gundor and Rohan, and also just in comparison to the other units out there, because of just the conscription times. Or I'm not, I'm sorry, not the conscription times, but the conscription resources. Oh, as I'm actually looking at this, I'm also noticing it is a conscription time uh, difference as well. Because if you look at the uh, March Warden, I see when that, yeah. you can, yeah, when you conscript one, you actually get 50 units per command. And if you hop over to Gundor, again, you're getting the same amount of units. You're just paying all that extra for those units. Yep. And on top of that, it takes 40 minutes to construct a March Warden versus an hour for a Swan Knight. And I am, I'm checking over here. That is also the case for Marshals as well. So that goes the case for mounted units. Just, just in general. Look at Linden. Yeah, they're all Linden, the same. Linden, Arnor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and the Iron Warrior, they all have the that minutes. same So they're able to put out, in a war effort, they're able to put out their Tier 4 units faster. They're cheaper, and they do just as much work as the... The the Marshals are really good um, for what they are. It's just Swan Knights in general. But let's dive into the March Warden's ability real quick. Chance to ignore avoidance status each round. Okay, so you might be thinking this, is, this isn't this is good. Um, think about Faramir. Um... Faramir has avoidance status. I know um, Gandalf has, I think, two turns. 
Am I right on that? Gandalf has two turns of avoidance. Yeah, status. Gandalf has two turns. There's items that grant avoidance, yes. so you're always working against that. And um, gosh, yeah, there's so many other instances of avoidance to yep. just be that. And the other thing too is it's each round. It's not for yep. the first three every rounds. Round. It is every round. So it's really that. That's really a critical component when looking at that yeah so this is going to be really good in season two and three i like people are going to get their commanders and i 100 percent bet you that they're going to focus there's going to be more meta builds to come out absolutely and i think more meta builds will come out with avoidance status more healing builds you i wouldn't be surprised to see that and you're going to see healing reduction builds um a lot more so i think these are going to be really good season two and three uh, specifically yeah. so and then indomitable is is a great skill yeah. they're totally unaffected by stun yep. i mean even if you took the defensive component out of that yep unaffected by stun that's good just by itself yeah so 20 defense yeah. on top of so they're rounded out to about 61 at max so let's dive into linden mm -hmm. um so this unit is kind of like a uh, kind of a cool unit in and of itself because it's the only one that has an ability um to itself as a unit so um so right here, 55 to 56, and then um, HP 60, defense 35, speed, is that 69? I think that's 69. And then mm -hmm. 16 siege, well-rounded conscription cost. I like to see a well-rounded conscription cost, I'm not lying, because you don't get all of your resources spent on one, like how the Swan Knights are for food. I mean, double the conscription cost pretty much. Yeah. But... Kind of, let's go ahead and just dive into their abilities because most of these are going to be equally the same. So let's dive into conscription costs for these guys. Keen Eye, again, they've got the same thing, the avoidance status. This is where they get interesting though here, folks. Volley. So against two enemy targets, attacks for 101.3% on rounds 1, 4, 7, and 10. Normal attacks are disabled. So this guy is going to go really well on people... Um, that do not have a chance to double up on their units. So I can't think any off the top of my head, but I do know there is units where they have a chance to follow up after they attack. Um, Legless, I know he does it for himself. Um, uh, Thandril. Thandril has an uh, ability Thandril. to follow up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, the Elves. I think the Elven Commanders, they have a thing where their units have a chance to follow up. So these are going to be really good on targets. Um where their units don't have a good follow-up, or they don't have a follow-up on one of their abilities, or you just don't level it. Think about it like that, too. Um, but yeah, this is really good stuff. I I like to see there's some complexity to the units themselves. So these and Arnor, um, but yeah, this is really good units. 55 to 56 um, damage. And the then, highest damage out of all the good units. Well, no, um, March ones are 59. March ones are 59. Really? Mm -hmm. Did I miss that? Yeah. Oh, I did miss that. But oh, like... Rangers of the North, though, these units are pretty crazy, in my opinion. I think that um, these are so, so cool because they're tank ranged units. So these go really well with marksmen, um, in my opinion. So they're able to tank um, for other units. And they have like a special fighting situation as well. So, when battling on non-structured lands, damage dealt plus 1%, damage received minus 1% at base. So, that's going to be 10% damage dealt, 10% damage received. That's just so, that's just such a crazy stat by itself. Um, because most of the battling you do is not on fortresses. Um, I will say, kind of into the later stages of the game, yes, you will be fortress smashing. But yeah. most of the time, it's going to be open field battles. And... Whenever you're already attacking someone's fortress, you're you've already got them beat, in my opinion. If you're already attacking their fortress, so this right here um, is a great skill to have out on the field because this is a great pushing one. Is if you're pushing people out of the field, you already got the advantage. So let's go into your second one though, protector of the north, defense, um, protects plus two, so they get twenty, and they already have uh, they already have eighty six HP and four forty nine defense. Um, that's pretty stat, pretty good stat in and of itself, and then they get uh, 20 at max, so that's going to be 69 uh, defense and then 86 HP. Um, 
I mean, these are such a good unit. So these are also, I believe, the fastest out of the archers. And they beat the March Wardens by one speed. So believe it or not, that actually makes a huge impact on... The, it's just one speed. Yeah. Um, that'll actually change. And they also have... He, they have uh, the highest HP and defense out of the archers. Yep. So they're going to be able to tank. So. And also, against allied range units, these with marksmen are going to kill it. Um, because they're just going to be able to sit there for the first two turns and just lay siege... Um, and get that full damage uh, buff with the Marksman. So these are really good. Let's dive into the last unit here, the Iron Warrior. Um, after battling these for quite literally like three weeks now, um, I can honestly say these are these are nuts. Look at that defense stat, folks. 116 defense. Who cares about their speed? Um, they're the last to attack, but they do 30 to 34, so it's low damage. But we'll kind of go into that a little later. But 84 HP in and of itself. Um, these stats are nuts. They're beasts. They're just and highest high siege yes. out of all the special units. Yep. So they're 40 minutes to conscript as well. Um, they've got a good um, resource distribution. Um, I don't like the low. I wish some of the food would go over to the wood, but you know, obviously they're, they're role playing a little bit and got the uh, got mostly iron and food, which makes a whole lot of sense. Let's go into their special abilities though. Physical damage received. Um, this is uh, really good because this is, what is that, 15% physical damage. And, I mean, every unit here is doing physical damage. The only people that are not going to be doing physical damage are, I believe, some of the special units. They do focus damage, which is, like, the Oathbreakers, why they're so good against Erebor. Um, but this right here is going to make up, like, 70%, 70-80% of damage received in general. Um, yeah, so that makes it so good. By now, itself. there are a lot of focus based commanders that this wouldn't uh, really do a whole lot against. But for the most part, most of the commanders, they do like Galadriel. Uh, Galadriel would rip apart uh, yeah. Erebor because like it's like uh, Galadriel has this ability where like every round she does a uh, uh, focus damage, I believe it's part of her auto attack. Yeah, and so, so it is her auto attack. It just yeah. converts it straight over. Mm hmm. So, but yeah, and then you have Battler's Bane, which is against melee units, plus two, plus two percent damage. So that goes up to um, twenty. Yeah. So I mean, that's a just a huge damage buff there in and of itself. And even though they have one of the lower attack stats, this is going to make up for that extra damage, especially against melee units. And so. It, it, it's a it's one of the most well-rounded and we'll get into a tier list later of all these units um when looking at them from a top-down view and comparing them but this right here definitely one of the most solid ones very other than the speed has some very rounded stats yeah absolutely agree um i would say they go really well kind of um if you have dwarven leaders specifically um, I mean, my gosh, I think that some of the, if you have Dane Ironfoot and you put him just stacked with Iron Warriors, I believe he has Dwarven specific skills and yeah. you know, increase, increase their damage, decrease the, decrease the damage that they take if they're dwarves. And I think him, Dane Ironfoot and Gimli also have the ability where they do more damage to melee units. So mm -hmm. when you think about Battler's Bane on top of all this extra damage that you're doing to melee yep. units, you're just going to shred those the the front line, the yeah. melee units. Legolas and Gimli both have the um, they have that thing where they take damage or get reduced damage. They have like special stats between the dwarves and the elves because one of the best things to do is to pair sentinels with iron warriors oh my gosh you just avoid damage they take the damage for you and your sentinels are able to stand in the back just shooting off arrows 24 7 but yeah that's actually one of the best commanders is actually gimli for erebor because one of the special abilities is like you had said and if you've got these units taking the or having the extra defense from mm -hmm. Gimli's special ability, oh, they're going to do so great. Such oh, a great yeah. combo. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But um, we've kind of ran up the video pretty long. Um, didn't expect it to be this long, but uh, this is such a critical topic for next season because we got to experience it in Season 1. Make a decision next season based on what you see here 
and go through and take a look at who you want to be. Like if you have an Elven commander, think about what would pair well going into next season. You know, think about what units you want to pair with. If you have Legless or Gimli going into Erebor and having a front line with Iron Warriors is a really strong combo. Same thing with Anor. If you think you can set up well by flanking units and not battling on, you know, structured tiles, think about it like that. Um, these units um, specifically have so much to, to give to your commanders um, that they're really worth all taking a look at and deciding... Next season, we will not be doing Gondor. I guarantee you that. Um, <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> yes, I guarantee it. There, it. The Oathbreakers are really good later on to the game. I mean, they're nuts, but I don't think it's worth making up for their horrible Tier 4 units. But, the way that we kind of approached, uh, you know, the Iron Warrior, there's counters to them. And so there's also counters to Oathbreakers. You just have to find them. Yeah, absolutely. But that's going to wrap us here, up here, folks, for um, our breakdown of all of the Tier 4 units on the good side. And be on the lookout for the evil side units next, folks. And we're going to be doing a tier list of these up soon as well. So got some stuff coming out for you. And this is IPP My Kids IRL. This is Sir Chubulus. And we'll see you all in the next one.